And there's a lot of factors determining attraction to divine truth. Right? Uh, the first one is being humble, humility. And a lot of people are seeking truth, but they have a very, very firm outline in their mind what that truth is already before they begin seeking. So my, my parents were... Um, my mother was looking for truth, for example, when I was just a child. And she investigated lots and lots of Christian faiths. Right? So she already had a feeling inside of her mind and heart that the truth had to be in a Christian faith. Does that make sense? Like There was already this predisposition to find it in that location. And so the majority of people do have predispositions of finding truth in certain locations. The other issue is that all of you are seekers of truth. And you will be surprised how many people in the, in the world, and in the universe in fact, are not seekers of truth. Just because you are one, it doesn't mean that the next door neighbour that you have is automatically one. Yeah. A lot of times what we do is we judge other people by our own conception of ourselves. So what happens when a person's a seeker of truth? You automatically believe that everyone's a seeker of truth. Are you saying that at our core some people just... I mean, how can it be that you don't want to know the truth? <laughs> um, these two states are... Oh, by the way, the humility state is not necessarily a state of um, error created by our incarnation. Because Ammon and Amman, the first human couple, did not exercise humility, and they were perfect. They were perfect human couple at the six-fear level, and yet they didn't exercise humility. The, right now, the most perfect people in the universe without God's love are in the sixth sphere of the spirit world. And there are literally billions of spirits in that state. They are not in a state of atonement with God, although some of them believe they are. And they are not in a state of humility, although many of them believe they are. Now, humility and seeking the truth are not to do with erroneous emotions that exist within you. These qualities exist within you, whether you have erroneous motions or not, within so you. some people don't have that quality, like my... Some people have not developed these qualities. But aren't they inherent? No. Wow. There are some qualities that are not inherent that you must develop. In fact, the majority of qualities, from God's perspective, are all developed. You think about it. If God's love... If these people had automatic humility and they're automatic seekers of truth and they're living in the sixth sphere of the spirit world, would not they be automatically receiving divine love? Yeah. Well, I was sort of thinking because of soul damage that we wouldn't want to go there. But they don't have soul damage. They're free of soul damage. So why don't they want to receive divine love? I don't know. <laughs> Nor do I. Some of them think they are, certainly. Some of them want to believe they are already in that state. Many, all of the, many of the ones that I've met in the sixth fear myself have all, want, have all believed they're already at one with God. But they know there's fears above them that they can't get to, but they don't understand why. I've had explained to me one of the reasons why was that the spirits that are above the sixth fear are a different type of spirit or a different type of person. They've, I've had some explain to me in my, like, I'm talking in the 2,000 years of my existence, I've had lots who explain to me that it actually I and them were made differently right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I've had others explain to me that I'm just a frivolous piece of <laughs> fluff <laughs> that, uh, that God will let go anywhere because I'm not that important. I've had people say that to me. So when they pick up on your energy? Oh, certainly. If they allow it. I've wanted my children to be non-smokers, but they're both smokers, so I have no um, control over that. 
Well, that's a bit different because you do have control over it because it's an emotion driving your children to smoke, and that emotion possibly was created by your yeah. their environment, yeah, but which mean, you were created. Like you said before, I can't push them to be no, yeah, very true. You can't seek. You know, they've been told over and over, you know, that smoking's bad for them and all these other things, right? You know, and yet they still do it. Why? Because they. Because they want to. Because yeah. <laughs> they want to. Has God create, created any soul with a consistent quality? Like, do we have a consistent quality of thread that runs through? Oh, there's some basic consistent qualities. One, one is everyone at the heart level has a desire at some point to connect to God. They often misinterpret okay. right. that desire. And every, uh, some, every person at some level has a desire to connect to their soulmate, but often they misinterpret that desire. But those two desires are very basic desires. Every person at the soul level has a will, and they are recognise their will eventually. Every person at the soul level has that. But how you exercise your will is very individual. Very individual. And God doesn't control it, nor does God want to. That's why he gave you your will, because <laughs> he wants to be free with that. Uh, can I say anything? Um, you can't receive divine love without realising it at the soul level, but you can certainly receive divine love and not intellectually realise that you've received it. Many Christians are in this state where they've actually they've had huge emotions towards God of wanting God's love to enter them. They've actually had God's love enter them, but they've misinterpreted the event and they think it's something else. Right? So that happens for many people, certainly. Many people who are non-Christian have, have you know, had that state. You hear of many Muslims or Buddhists or, or um, uh, Hindu, of the Hindu faith having these moments where they've actually felt divine love into their soul, right? But, but it, because they don't know how to recreate it, they think it has something to do with their faith, that's something to do with their particular religious stance that caused them to receive that at that moment. We refer to Christians on many occasions. <laughs> I don't call myself anything, I'm just a man, right? Um, yeah, like, the truth is that I never want, wanted a label to be placed on what I was teaching in the first century, although after my death they called it the way. And what, I, what they meant by that was it was the way to God, right? Remember... Um, in the first century I gave many illustrations about the different paths. There were, I said there was a broad and spacious path leading off into the road of natural love, right? And lots and lots, every single person almost following that path. And then I said there was a narrow way leading to life. And few are the ones finding that, right? And that was what I was talking about, this way of divine love, this way of divine truth the way that is being explained to you. Can you see why it's narrow? Yeah. You can feel it's narrow, can't you? Yeah. Not many people <laughs> want to do it, do they? And even yourself sometimes, you don't want to do it either, right? And it is a narrow way, but it's, it's the way God made for you to connect to God. right? And that was the way God wanted to teach Amon and Amen about right back in the first time. But they rejected that way because they wanted there to be a different way their own way and this is where it gets down to God reliance versus self reliance and so when we talk about the way what I'm talking about the way of divine truth or the way of divine love that's the same thing that we talked about in the first century the way of life and that's why I said in the first century and this is going to trigger a number of you I am the way and the truth and the life and what I meant by that was that by my own possession of divine love standing right in the midst of them and I said to them that the kingdom of God was in their midst and they did not even know it what I meant was right at that time was my life was a demonstration right that this divine love existed for every single person who has ever lived on earth or in the spirit world this divine love was there waiting to enter them and I was the living proof standing right in front of them that it had, that it had been offered to them Right? And all they needed to do was to listen to what I'd already been taught about it and they would also be able to experience the same thing. 
and that's what I'm suggesting to you really now. I'm saying, listen to what I've been taught about it. I've been taught like you've been taught. I, it didn't just like, I, I don't have all of this truth just, uh, you know, coming to me because I'm unique or special in some way. I've just been taught the same way, but I've just been taught by God just like you can be taught by God. And the divine love will enter you and you will feel the truth as a result of it. And it's exactly the same thing as I said in the first century. Exactly the same thing. In the first century, did you have your followers clear their emotions the way you're suggesting us now? I tried to help them clear their emotions, but there was lots and lots of resistance, as you can imagine. Quite often, I'd be walking along to another, like, to another town, and, and the, my friends would not be walking with me. They'd be walking, like, a hundred yards behind me, arguing and fighting amongst themselves about what I'd just said to them. <laughs> Right, and having a huge disagreements, and in fact, there, there was a whole series of times when you know they wanted to report me to different people and cause trouble for me and all sorts of things because of what I'd said to them. Right, so there was a lot of resistance in the first century, much more resistance than there is now towards listening to truth. That's why you've come back now. Because... Yeah, because the, the world is like primed now. Yeah. There are so many <laughs> seekers of truth now. Right, that it really want it in their heart, and it's an ideal time to present the truth again. And you'll find, because of everyone being in this new place of seeking, the world being in this space of seeking and exercising, exercising their will to change, that things will change quite rapidly as a result. This is prophesied, wasn't it? Yeah, 